Good morning, St. James. It's Sunday, May the 10th, the fifth Sunday in Eastertide. Happy Mother's Day. Our service today begins on page two of the service leaflet, which is in a link right below this video. I hope you've already accessed that and maybe even printed it out. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Lord, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll read the psalm responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. The second reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices 
acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak in my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not believe, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. you have page one. You can't get good help these days, I tell you what. Today we have in John's Gospel a continuation of the story that we started back on Monday, Thursday, actually. Our lectionary does this weird zigzag thing so that here we are in the Easter season and yet we're reading about the night of the Last Supper, the night on which Jesus was betrayed and turned over. It is the Last Supper scene. Jesus and his disciples have gathered together for a meal. Jesus began this evening by strapping a towel around his waist and washing their feet. Later, Judas Iscariot left the party and is now off fetching the police. And Peter has been told he will deny Christ three times. Then Jesus speaks the opening words of our gospel. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe. 
Belief is an idea that appears in each one of our lessons today. In our first reading, if anyone ever de demonstrated belief to the maximum, it was Stephen. And then in 1 Peter, that lesson tells us that all who believe will not be put to shame. And there it is in the first verse of our gospel. Believe. Now that's a word I want to talk about today. I want to unpack that word a little bit. But do me a favor, though, and hold on to that word for just a few minutes. Just keep it in the back of your minds. We'll come back to it in a bit. Later in the gospel, Jesus speaks a trinity of words to, de to describe himself. It's a, a portion of the scripture that I am certain most of us are very familiar with. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Two questions I want to engage today are, what would this have meant for those people who first heard this 2,000 some odd years ago, hearing Jesus speak those words for the very first time, what did, how did those, those words land with that, those people? And then what do they mean to us today? Way, as in I am the way. In Hebrew scripture, the definition of the word way had expanded far beyond the literal meaning of path or road or even route from one place to another. Even as far back as the time of Isaiah, it had come to mean a way of life. And even more than that, it had come to stand for a way of living that lined up with God's purposes. To observant Jews, the way, that would have meant living your life by the precepts of the law. Their religion was based on following a strict set of rules of conduct and behavior that were outlined in the Torah. In contrast to this, Jesus turns the world upside down. He says that he is the way. He doesn't give us a long list of rules or directions. Instead, he says, love me and love one another as I have loved you. And he says, follow me. This idea had come to be associated so strongly with Jesus that early Christians were also called followers of the way. I wonder how much of our spiritual lives we spend following Jesus on his way, and maybe how much we might spend paying undue attention to the law of our own way. Are we more concerned with what we think is the right way to do things, or are we simply placing one foot in front of the other in the steps that Jesus laid out for us? Steps of peace and love and truth. Years ago, Kevin and I had, uh, and the kids, uh, had this follow me experience. We were up in the foothills of the Sierra um, Nevada mountains in a little town uh, of Jackson, California. We had a couple of hours to kill and we thought we'd try to find some place for the kids to play. They were grade schoolers and they'd been cooped up quite a bit and we thought we'd take them out to a playground somewhere. Kevin asked a woman who was coming out of a nearby grocery store if she knew where a school was. And she gave us this long list of directions, you know, go to the second stoplight and turn left after the Taco Bell and then proceed up the hill past four rights and three lefts and at the fourth left turn south and go up the hill and veer right and you can't miss it. I don't know about you, but I hate those words. You can't miss it. I invariably do miss it. But off we went and we did in fact find the school, but there was something wrong. It was a high school. There was no playground there. Maybe we had made a mistake. Maybe she had met a school a little bit further on on the same road. Unfortunately, this was long before Google Maps or navigation systems or any other assistance that we have today. So we pulled out back onto the road and we thought we'd just go a little further and see if we ran into something. And then suddenly behind us, there she was tooting her horn and we pulled over and she apologized. She said, you know, halfway home, I got to thinking and I realized you wanted a playground for the kids. I should have sent you to the grammar school. Follow me. And off she took and she led us on this merry chase down the hill and across the highway and up the hill and past yet another Taco Bell and out to the other side. We would never have found the way. We would never have reached our goal had she, not a real person, driving a real car, 
not come back and taken us there. And that, my friends, is what Jesus did for us. He came, he be, he came and became a real person. And he says, come on, I know the way to where you want to go. Follow me. Follow me on this new way, this way of love and peace and truth. Oh, truth. Jesus continued with, I am the truth. For Jesus and his first disciples, the Hebrew word for truth has in it a wonderful component of reliability. Truth is not just some intellectual fact that can be known. That meaning of truth came to us from the Greeks. Instead, in this culture, truth is relational and reliable. The Hebrew people were a tribe, they were a community. They depended upon each other and they depended upon God. A true God, then, is one on whom you can rely. Jesus is telling his disciples and us that he is reliable, that he is the real deal. He's telling us that we don't need some esoteric spiritual knowledge to be free. We have a relationship with the true God, and that's what sets us free. Let me warn you, though, the truth can be a little bit tricky. Brother Robert Hugh, who's an Episcopal Franciscan, has a life motto that I kind of love and hate. The truth is my friend, he says. The truth is my friend. Throughout scripture, I have to admit, there is a lot of truth, and some of it is truth I would rather not call my friend. For example, from 1 Peter, just one verse before our second lesson today, if we backed up just one extra verse, it says, rid yourself of all malice, guile, insincerity, envy, slander. Well, when you say it like that, sure, I'd like to be rid of it, but hmm, wait a minute. Not that long ago, I cut a guy off in traffic in a pretty malicious way, and then I, I waved a rather insincere apology, and all the while I was wondering why I can't have a Lexus too. Oops, living this truth thing might be a little harder than I thought. Are you like me? I find that the truth about someone else is much more of a friend to me than the truth about me personally. It's so much easier for me to see the truth about your life, the way that you should live your life, than the truth about my own. In the same way, I have a suspicion that the truth about my life might be a little bit easier and maybe even a little more attractive for you to see. Truth is something that we have to be careful with. Sometimes we do indeed have some little bit of truth for a sister or brother in Christ, but we almost never have the whole truth about someone else. We may have part of the truth that is fact, but we must temper that factual knowledge with a healthy dollop of that trustworthiness between people that is entailed in the Hebrew concept of truth. Do we give our small piece of truth to our sister or brother in a way that assures them of our continued acceptance, or do we spread it around with a great big shovel burying them in the process? You know, there is such incredible good news in knowing that God sees all of our truth. He can see into the dark spots in our lives and in our hearts, and still he is God and we are his. God's truth is reliable because God is reliable. Instead of burying us in it, God's truth leads us to life. Oh, life, that last term in our Trinity, in the Hebrew Bible, life is about the here and the now. It's about life on this earth. But there's more. For the Hebrew, the Hebrew people, life is God's gift. It's a blessing. It's not just about surviving. It's about flourishing. Jesus came to give us life, abundant life. Remember, we just heard that last week at the end of our gospel. Abundant life. Life that begins now and continues on after death. Can we hear that? Life that begins now. In the lesson from 1 Peter, God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
darkness, a, a word that's associated with being lost, with evil, with absence or death, fear. Light, also known as goodness or life. So God calls us out of death and into life. We get it confused sometimes, don't we? We think that we are alive and we will die. But no, we were dead and now we are alive. And how exactly do we follow in this new way of his, this truth and life way? For that answer, we have to go back to the word that I ask you to hold on to, believe. When we believe, what is it that we believe in? Well, you know, I like to think I believe in truth. And if truth is much more than just factual knowledge, then belief is a whole lot more than mere intellectual assent to factual knowledge. We learned earlier that truth is reliable. In the Bible, truth means someone you can trust. Did you ever notice that there's just one letter different between the words truth and trust? The truth is, this trust is lived out in community, both in our relationship with God and in our relationships with each other. Therefore, believing is participating in the actions of a community. It's an action word. It can be pretty tough to accomplish right now, at least at first blush, but living truth out in community can mean keeping yourself and the rest of us safe by staying home, by wearing a mask, by taking precautions, by sacrificing what each of us would individually like for the common good. Living in a life of belief means turning the world upside down by following the way of Jesus and not the way of the world. For example, it's praying for our enemies when every fiber of our being cries for revenge. And it's letting our hearts be broken by the same sorts of things that break the heart of God, even if it means giving up old habits and beliefs to do so. Living in belief is about embracing abundant life in the here and the now, even when our lives seem so restricted right now. It's about making God's friendship and abundance available to all, not just in some promised afterlife, but by living fully in God's kingdom now and inviting the world to enter into that kingdom with us. So believing is walking in the way of Christ. Lucky for us, it is a way trod by a God who came among us to show us that way. A God that says, follow me, and then leads us on a merry chase through life. Believing is embracing truth that is relational and reliable. It is loving and serving a God on whom we can rely and through whom we can serve all of God's children. And believing means living an eternal life, an eternal life right now, right here. It's about recognizing that we were dead but we are now alive. And my friends, it's about finding ways to offer that life to the world around us. Amen. Our service continues on page six with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to page 7, the prayers of the people. We pray to the Lord, to the God who is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. We pray for our communities, for the elderly confined to their homes and separated from family and support, for children removed from school, for those who have lost their, their source of income, for those who fear for their homes, for those who have no home, and for those offering extraordinary everyday kindness. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Help us in our time of trouble. We pray for the young and those in education, for those anxious about learning in this new environment, for teachers worrying about their charges, and for parents who are suddenly teachers. Lord, you are our refuge and strength. Let us not be afraid, even though the world is changed. We pray for workers, for all medical staff and hospital workers who go to work knowing the risks they face, for medical researchers seeking ways to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for farmers, delivery and shop workers keeping the nation provisioned, and for cleaners fighting the spread of infection. Lord, be with us in our time of need. Help us to do what has been asked of us, and give us grace to help others do what has been asked of them. We pray for the world, for the leaders of the nations and their governments, for areas most besieged by the panic, for broken places where, where health care and resources are scarce, where the pandemic brings further suffering, for wisdom and guidance for all those in authority. Lord, may the nations hear your voice. And know that you are God. We pray for those who are sick, for those afflicted with coronavirus, for those with other illnesses and conditions with, which leave them vulnerable, for those with poor mental health, for all who suffer, remembering especially those we now name, for Susan and Don and Carol and Ida and Norm and Tom and John. Wow. Lord, we trust in you because your love is constant. Bring us comfort and healing, for you are always willing to save. We pray for the church, for our fellow members in the body of Christ throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, the clergy, lay ministers, and all the people in their care, for our hospital and hospice chaplains, for all who minister to the sick and the dying, for the people of St. James, Keep us and all those we love and all this whole world from illness and infirmity before our time. Deliver us from fear, isolation, and despair. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Keep us fearless in proclaiming your word and works, and make us to be lights in the darkness. We pray for those who have died, for those taken suddenly, for those taken unexpectedly, for the families they leave behind, for their friends, for those who have died alone, and for those who have no one to remember them. Lord, may we who have, may those who have waited for you and hoped in your word know your steadfast love face to face. And today we pray in thanksgiving for the divine gift of motherhood in all its forms, for all mothers, for our own mothers, those living and those who have died, for the mothers who have loved us, and for those who fell short of loving us fully, 
for those who hope to be mothers someday, for all those whose yearnings to have children have been frustrated, for those mothers who through death or separation no longer see their children, and for those among us who have mothered others in need. Lord, for all those who mother, We offer our hopes and fears, our joys and sorrows to God, our refuge and strength. Lord, listen to our prayers and hear the voice of our supplications as we who trust in your word eagerly await your help, for you are the God of our salvation. This we ask through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May the love that is creating us, and the love that is healing us, and the love that is sustaining us be in you, and with you, and through you, for your healing and the healing of the world. And may the blessing of God, the one, holy, and undivided Trinity, be upon you and abide with you now and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.